why do you think then uh, Ray was so much criticized for showing this reality of Indian and especially the poverty uh, abroad? Ray didn't have a good time of it. He was he was he was lionized by some, by uh, a lot of us, uh, people who mainly who uh, who. Uh, who had built bridges between the West and the East and India, the West and India. But uh, those who had not built those bridges were outraged. They were so used to the mythicalization of uh, the past, the present, and the future. The idealization of it, the abs um, uh, making everything in, uh, into an abstraction. That when this, when this harsh reality was, was shown, it shocked a lot of people. Uh, I remember that um, uh, critics wrote saying he should have made the old woman a little more beautiful. After all, old age has its own beauty. And uh, his, his, uh, talking about his children, uh, the, the children are too harsh. They're cruel. Children should, shouldn't have cruelty in them. This is a convention. This is the mythicalization that I'm talking about. A child cannot be cruel. In reality, a child can be cruel. Now, which do you show? So it is unhesitatingly shown, show, show the, 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 both the reality of, of compassionate childhood and loving childhood and the reality of harsh, cruel childhood. Uh, in uh, Opu Shankar, uh, in, uh, yes, in Opu Shankar, the, the world of Opu, where uh, Opu uh, Kajal is, uh, Mm. Uh, is, is, is chasing uh, animals and, and try, trying to hit them with arrows, things like that. It was criticized by some, some early critics. Gradually this criticism was forgotten. But the film industry at, at large uh, criticized Ray for exposing poverty to, they said he was selling India's poverty to the West. That's why he was popular, that's why he was famous, and so on and so forth. Mm. And in fact, uh, as you know, Pathapanchit was sent abroad only after um, Jawaharlal Nehru intervened and said, no, uh, it's a film like this cannot be, uh, cannot be stopped from going abroad. And uh, mm. Ray himself said, and many of us said, that uh, the uh, West will understand India much better when it sees that India understands itself. When Indians go, uh, wake up to their own reality and begin to, uh, begin to look at it, then the other people will, will also look at it through our eyes and will begin to understand it and begin to admire our effort. That um, the effort to, 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 to improve the situation in India and to remove the poverty and to make a new life for people is something that can happen only after the realization has dawned. And this, this is this is the film. This is this, this is the film. Bhadra Panchali, that is, that that shows that realization that we have realized what we are. And this is something that we could not explain to the film industry. It's too subtle for them. Uh, I would like to go back for uh, for a while to um, what you were saying about uh, the beauty and the harshness and the coexistence of two in Pater Panchali. And um, could you maybe explain about the the force it gets from that uh, interlocking between between them all the time? For example, the, when the child are playing and uh, full of life and at the same time uh, auntie is dying and that kind of relationship for example when Durga gives the truth to uh, to uh, the old woman and then Sabojaya is really angry about that fact I mean that permanent uh one of the most fascinating things about uh, Patri one of the new things, I would say, 
in not only in the Indian context but in the context of cinema as a whole, is the uh, juxtaposition of uh, of the harsh and the beautiful, and um, the flow of one into another, the interaction between the two. Uh, there's probably, if I'm asked to name the one aspect of the trilogy, which is the most, mo which most affects me, it's the deaths. And there are five important deaths which take place in the trilogy. The first is the death of the old wo old woman, and uh, it shows something that a, a kind a contrast between between uh, between uh, the beautiful and the harsh that fascinates Ray throughout his life. Mm. That th these children do not know what death is. They, they, they are looking at it for the first time and they don't know the relationship with it, that the inevitability of death affects them also, that it's implanted within them also. They don't know it. They see something uh, happening which fascinates them, which they do not understand. You see that even in Piku, the contrast between the old man's arm and the, 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 the child's, mm, the wrinkled arm with varicose veins and the rounded, beautiful uh, arm of the, of the, of the, of the boy. Uh, this is something that um, uh, he, he explores again and again. And uh, in, uh, in, the, in the trilogy, uh, you, you see it uh, repeatedly. In the, in the death of uh, Harihar, for instance, in, in, uh, in Aparajito, where his eyes will bulge out of the socket. Uh, and he, he rises up uh, just before he falls, falls back to die. Mm. The, 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 it's, it's extremely harsh. Death was never shown in Indian cinema in that, in that manner. And yet, once he falls, once he's dead, Suddenly, there is a flight of pigeons. It's, it's beautiful to look at. It's, uh, it suggests this, the flight of the spirit from the body, from this, of the soul. It goes back to Indian, Indian philosophy. And it, it's, it compresses a whole lot of uh, images and thoughts and uh, traditions into one single image. Uh, then the death of Shabrajaha also, <coughs> when she sits under the tree, that I've, I've talked about this already, uh, the, 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 uh, the feeling you have of life slowly, little by little, ebbing away in an inevitability which, which you cannot fight, which you must understand and accept. Uh, as inevitable as a part of, of the whole cycle of existence. And, uh, and then in the sudden death of, of uh, the un uh, death which is not shown uh, in uh, of upper nine, upper uh, uh, world of Upu. And the death is really shown in her face when she lights it up, when, when she lights up, a, 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 strikes a match. Uh, in order to light uh, Opu's cigarette. And with the, but the light falls on her face and gives it an unearthly uh, kind of glow and a suggestion of impending death. That uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a momentary, that it's a momentary uh, uh, flush of light, you know, which, uh, um, which, which presages death and, and, and the end. Uh, and which emphasizes, underlines the, the nature of life, the, the, the evanescence of life, that uh, uh, the moment of life always coexists with the moment of death. Mm, I've left out one death, which was of Durga, which I don't like that much, uh, as much as I like the other deaths. Uh, I think in the death of Durga, there is probably a little drama which uh, doesn't affect me to the same extent. The, the naturalness of the deaths in the in the in the other uh, episodes, but uh, 
the harsh, uh, the contrast of harshness and and, uh, and beauty is uh, uh, for that reason. I'm saying a con contrast between life and death. Tu veux couper un moment, Annie? Ou...